And we're set to dive, delve straight into our first major conversation right here uh, on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. The Executive Vice Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, Professor Umar Danbata, uh, he said that telecoms infrastructure is very critical uh, to the successful conduct of the 2023 general elections in Nigeria. Now, he therefore is urging every Nigerian in every community to join hands in protecting telecoms infrastructure for the benefit uh, of the country. Dambata, who was a special guest at the Sith edition of the annual conference of Guild of Corporate Online Publishers in Lagos, uh, which with the focus on forthcoming elections, has said with the planned transmission of election data and results riding on telecom infrastructure, there was a need to ensure the fidelity of the transmission systems to enhance the credibility of such data. And of course, um, we're glad to have joined us to look at the importance of the telecommunications infrastructure in the overall su success of uh, the election. Uh, Dr. Fikayo Tomori, uh, he is uh, our guest this morning. He happens to be the private, uh, the president of the Private Telecommunications uh, and Communications Senior Staff Association of Nigeria. Sorry, I said doctor, sir. Apologies. Uh, Mr. Baby Tomori, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Thanks for joining us and glad to have you on the breakfast this morning. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Good morning to you all. All right. Um, um, I mean, I'd like you to, to, to speak on what uh, the, the gentleman we just talked about has said as regards the importance of telecoms infrastructure. Um, how important is this uh, for people to be aware? How important is this to democracy in Nigeria? Is this something you think about every day? We think about security, we think about corruption, we think about the judiciary, uh, we think about government, both at the federal, state, and local level, and their influence on the elections, but people do not always think about telecom. So uh, how, how important is this, and what should people, how should people approach um, the issue of telecoms infrastructure as far as elections in Nigeria are concerned? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Again, first of all, I'm obeying Tomori, the president of EFA, as you rightly introduced. Um, yes, regarding what uh, Professor Dambata mentioned, uh, yes, I think he's spot on. Yes, that's very correct. That uh, the telecoms sector in Nigeria is actually going to be a very vital role in the success of the coming elections in 2023. Uh, if you look at it, the election, whenever you conduct elections, you know that uh, time is always of the essence. And uh, doing elections, uh, communications is key. And it must actually be real time if you want it to be very effective. It actually supports in, uh, you know, record keeping, transfer of results. One, then secondly, you have uh, decision making. Uh, by the INEC themselves. And then the last one, which you also mentioned in your summary there, is about the security. Um, when, when during elections, you tend to have a breakdown of uh, law and order in some cases. And whenever this happens, you want to be able to reach out to the security operatives uh, at once to make sure that uh, the situation is uh, well arrested on time uh, to prevent it from uh, spreading. So for all these reasons and more, you find out that uh, the telecommunication uh, infrastructure in Nigeria is uh, very, very important. It is something that uh, we have to all protect, as uh, he has rightly said. And uh, I think we tend to agree with that very well. In the, in the discussions and the conversations around the Electoral Act uh, or the Electoral Bill, as it were, the, the, the nation's telecoms infrastructure and the, the strength, the durability, uh, and the ability of the infrastructure to deliver on the electronic transmission of votes, you know, they were brought into question, or that was brought into question, um, with some of the stakeholders saying that uh, we do not have uh, the capacity to 
to provide network coverage everywhere uh, for proper transmission of the votes. But of course, civil society kicked against this, uh, most of them, and uh, the rest is his history. We have the Electoral Act, electronic, electronic transmission of votes are allowed. Um, from your point, your vantage point as uh, uh, an industry stakeholder, you're the president of the Private Telecoms and Communications uh, Senior Staff Association of Nigeria. Are you confident that Nigeria has the infrastructural capacity in terms of the telecommunications sector to deliver as far as the electronic transmission of votes are concerned in 2023? Uh, okay, yes, we know that uh, the telecom coverage in Nigeria is not under the percent. Maybe the best we can talk about is uh, still about uh, 60 to 70 percent. Um, yes, this is also uh, maybe in most cases, you will find that uh, the best you could have will be like uh, 3G, uh, that's uh, the WCM in Export. And uh, when you want to talk about uh, transfer of uh, this data and uh, all these information we talk about, yes, you might need a very good network, at least the minimum will be 3G. Uh, but not nevertheless, uh, the coverage of 2G which is the ESM, which we all know, uh, could also actually enhance uh, some of the, the critical factors of uh, the success of the election, like uh, communication, making calls, and so on. So, but uh, we cannot write it off completely and say that we don't have uh, a network that can support the election. No, this is not correct. What we can only say is that, uh, yes, we are not there. But uh, we we definitely have center of uh, of uh, you know combining and uh, I mean gathering all the results together. You know, all the these centers uh, are scattered all around the country, so and definitely we have them in capital. And uh, something that is sure and sure we are sure of is that uh, there, there is a very good coverage of uh, the minimum of three G in all state capitals of Nigeria. So, yeah, definitely in some remote areas and remote locations, you might find some troubles. But uh, in those cases, I think they will have to live with uh, manual um, transmission. So, yes, there, there are areas where we will find uh, some challenges. But uh, what we have in Nigeria is something that could also be uh, used for, for the current, uh, I mean, the coming election. All right. Uh, 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 so what, what do we need? What do we need to do to, I, I, I mean, if you're saying we have only 60% uh, uh, telecommunications coverage uh, of the country, when does this negatively affect the, the, <laughs> the smooth uh, conduct of the election? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if, if we have, you say we have about 60% coverage of telecoms, uh, telecoms coverage of Nigeria, um, I mean, wouldn't this def definitely certainly uh, uh, affect the smooth conduct of these elections negatively? And if so, what needs to be done to, to overcome it? I, I, if I get your question well, uh, you mean about uh, the, the remaining areas without coverage? Absolutely. What do we do in those cases? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yes, you know, as I mentioned, yes, these areas are there, and uh, definitely INEC have their own processes. And as we know, these processes start from the minimum of, uh, I mean, the lowest level of the polling unit. And uh, these polling units definitely, uh, in most cases, are cited in areas where you can't actually have uh, minimum coverage of uh, 2G, maybe edge on the data. And uh, for this reason, a lot of people uh, in the remote areas have to move them up to some areas where they can actually get to, to access these polling units. Um, the, these are what, uh, these are some of the things that uh, the INEC and uh, also NCC need to look into. For example, there is uh, the rural connectivity, which uh, NCC and uh, the operators in Nigeria have been working on for some time. 
this have to, to really be, be, be I mean, a lot of work needs to be done on that uh, aspect for rural uh, telephony to, to come in as fast as we can. And also the coverage should be should be enhanced. Um, also, maybe just to, to mention that yes, the infrastructure that are, are very very important uh, to us, but you know the resilience to which uh, to, to I mean to which this uh, equipment to work on their own. Something that we as a union we uh, want to call on the government, the SEC and the other uh, establishments also to look into the. Uh, workers of uh, the sector, you know. So these equipment have this limitation of how, I mean, how and uh, when they can work on their own. So we want to use this opportunity also to call on them to look at this, the uh, the workers in the sector and uh, consider them also as equally important. And uh, this, this is something that uh, we need to look at. Uh, for example, in some of the cases, you find that uh, uh, some of the workers in the sector have actually been uh, denied their, their rights of uh, uh, association. Uh, you know, freely as they could, they're not allowed to freely associate. This actually has been pending for some time, and it only have the tendency and possibility to blow, blow up in the face of us all if it is not well managed. And uh, the, as the elections are coming, we need to also look at that. As we, we are looking at the infrastructure, you look at the people that are making the infrastructure also work very well. So I think this this aspect should uh, be managed together with the infrastructure. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, the the uh, the the the. Um uh, uh, Mr. Dambata, Dr. Dambata, talked about certain, you know, effects of uh, of courses, uh, you know, of 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 um, all the issues we have with the, the telecoms infrastructure and the reasons why they do not work or may not may not work. And what, some of the things he mentioned uh, are, are situations to do with host communities and their attitudes towards protecting the telecoms infrastructure. He talked about hostile host communities. He talked about diesel theft. It's quite. Uh, uh, interesting to hear that people will go steal the diesel that is meant to power these uh, telecoms infrastructure. Maybe he's talking about uh, base stations. There are other things he mentioned, but all these have to do with um, the protection of this infrastructure by the host community. Um, he says that it will be difficult to communicate with family and friends over long distances and conduct banking and insurance activities, access government and other social services. So um, what, what strategy can be employed? You know, it's apart from saying this, you know, in, in a, at a forum like this, which, you know, a lot of those who are, are, are involved in some of these activities may not even be following, what, what, what strategies can be employed by the telecommunications sector, uh, the stakeholders there, both the government and the private sector, to, to ensure we don't have the, this vandalization that he's talking about? Yeah, that's a very good question, and uh, it uh, brings to for the business of uh, the communities where these infrastructures lie into the overall architecture of managing these uh, infrastructures. Uh, in most cases, what you find out is uh, the breakdown of communication. This leads to a lot of uh, agitation by old communities and also lack of information, the, the right information about the, the impact and how these uh, infrastructures actually affect the, the local community. These are some of the reasons why you find a lot of these agitations there and there. Uh, in some cases, you find someone who, who has a base station close to his house thinking that, uh, yes, this is going to kill me, and uh, there is no right uh, education for such a person to know that uh, this is not actually correct, that all these things are actually having, yes, you might say they have an effect, but the effect to, to, to what and uh, at what distances. All this kind of uh, education needs to be given to all these those communities properly 
not that uh, we go there and fight base stations and then people are are passing down the information and then there to say to you know against those infrastructures. So these have to be well managed. And then in terms of uh, the detect, yes, this is something that is so common, you know, and happens all the time. Uh, it brings also uh, the importance of the host communities. For example, when you put something, you put the base station somewhere and there are it's put in the city, if the local community are also charged with uh, uh, keeping the security of those uh, infrastructures, and uh, they see that uh, this is also beneficial for them, I think it can also reduce the impact of uh, theft we need to do. And uh, secondly, the kind of solutions that uh, the the operators also em- I mean, uh, employ on those sites also could, uh, can actually go a long way to, to protect what has been put there. So, but uh, all in all, these are, are real uh, risks and real dangers that are there for telecom infrastructure in Nigeria. Not only telecom infrastructure, but uh, the the current economic condition are leading a lot of people to believe that uh, they can make fast money from uh, the telecom infrastructure uh, theft. You know, so but at least if we involve more. Uh, the local community, the local vigilante, and so on, to make sure that uh, these infrastructures are well secure. Mm. Then we can reduce the impact of theft as well. So, are, are you saying the NCC um, has not, or you know, even the Ministry of Communications, if they're involved in this, so uh, and the stakeholders have not done the needful to to, to get the communities to buy in uh, into protecting these now we can call them critical you know, infrastructure, critical telecoms infrastructure. You're saying they've not done the work. Um, I mean, do they need to embark on more sensitization campaigns? Do they need to probably appoint people in the communities to, because talk about vigilantes, you know, um, uh, these people do not work without, uh, you know, something in their stomach or something in the pocket. So do they need to appoint, uh, maybe have community uh, telecoms, you know, ambassadors or committees to protect these these uh, infrastructure because some of these infrastructure, from what I'm seeing, we have um, fiber optic cables. I've seen uh, in, in states across the country the, how these cables are laid. You know, in some states, the government will lay the cables all through. Some states, uh, private company, you know, private telecoms, telcos will lay the cables, and you have to really take time to dig deep to get these cables out. So it's not something you can do overnight. Um, so uh, it seems there's some some sort of um, uh, people are, are turning the other way, looking the other way, and not really concerned about it. What do they need to do specifically to get the communities to take ownership of this infrastructure? Do the communities even know when when the labels cables are being laid? Now we're talking about five G. Do they do they go to meet them? So oh, this is what we are doing here, oh, and we want you to come and see. Uh, okay, so uh, we need you to know that this is for you. Uh, this is what this cable we are laying here is meant to achieve. Sometimes people don't even just see, you know, up, you know, uh, technical people digging up the ground and laying these cables. They don't know what they are for. So, so what, yeah. what? Yes, yes. What specifically does the NCC, the Minister of Communications, the private sector, even your 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 association need to do to get the community to buy in? Is it more sensitization? in all the, the local languages, et cetera? Yes. Thank um, you. Yes, uh, very comprehensive, actually. Uh, actually, yeah, let me start from the last part, which is uh, our union, okay? What we are always uh, talking about is that uh, the people that are responsible for the, the first line of uh, maintenance and uh, also taking care of this uh, infrastructure. Uh, in some cases, the fiber that uh, are being laid, uh, I tell you, there is a lot of marginalization and uh, constant victimization of uh, these uh, resources. Uh, some time back, early this year, our union went, we embarked on a, on a, uh, on a warning strike which was to call the attention of all stakeholders, that is the 
operators themselves, the SEC, the Ministry of Communication, to the fact that the first line of defense that we have against all the vandalization, intentional or non-intentional, these people are being marginalized, they are being ill-treated, and uh, they, they just count as nothing. We have almost like 1,000 resources working day in, day out, night and day, to make sure that uh, all these things keep on, uh, I mean, uh, keep on being live and uh, not disrupted in any way. So, but unfortunately, uh, everyone seems to have forgotten that uh, we have these uh, soldiers on the field doing these things. So that is actually the first thing. So we've actually called on the operators and also the vendors equally to call them to, to come and uh, do what is necessary. You know, look into their well-being, look into their welfare, when in some cases, even the, the resources we are talking about, the staff we are talking about, they use their money, their hard-earned money, to transport themselves from one place to the other, to the site, you know. So in these cases, uh, you don't expect uh, effectiveness and efficiency. So this is the first part, which is the most important, actually. And then secondly, when you talk of the host community, yes, you need to do more in terms of awareness. For example, you are laying a cable which someone is thinking that is carrying water. He's thinking, oh, okay, this is uh, maybe a, a water pipe or something, or I can use this for so, 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 and so on. So now time also erodes the information that they have. For example, when you have uh, this cable laid over through a community and there is no proper documentation even within the local community that the cable has been laid through the so portion of the road or the community itself, then after some time, after some years, someone will go in there, maybe doing the construction and then be it and the... Uh, you know, before you know what, it is gone. So when you pay attention to the welfare and the proper tools of trade of the engineers that are on this site, on those routes, then they can easily drive through. Maybe if it's going to be the length of uh, 100 kilometers at least one or three times a week, then it will make it easier for you to control this kind of, uh, you know, vandalization. So, but when this is not there, and the guy there who is supposed to do this does not even have the necessary tools of trade, most importantly, the vehicle with which they can fly the route, then you will find that this is keep happening. So, this goes, it goes hand in hand, and uh, we've always been calling on all the stakeholders, including the ministry, to look into this uh, and make sure that uh, they, they, they quickly and uh, I mean, quickly attend to this, you know. All right, all right. Very interesting uh, views you shared with us. I want to thank you uh, so much for your time. Obey me, Tomori, who is president of the Private Telecommunications and Communications uh, Senior Staff Association of Nigeria. Uh, looking forward to having you here sometime in the future. All right, thank you very much. All right. All right, appreciate your time. And uh, that's the size of that conversation. We'll be back uh, with more discussions. Uh, the Lagos State House of Assembly has passed a motion on girl child protection. We'll discuss that in a jiffy. Stay with us.